everyone welcome to 6.3 inverse trig functions so I want to give you a brief uh, review of inverse functions in math inverse uh, means something specific it uh, in English it might seem like you know, it's the opposite or the reverse or, you know you might have some other ways of understanding this but here in math inverse here would mean switching uh, the x and the y axis so think of that kind of switch okay? inverse so um, we can see it as x and y axes are interchanged that means what is x comma y for a function f would have y comma x for its inverse and you know the inverse notation was f with a power negative one right it's not a power negative one it's the notation so we call it f inverse and then um, we did the horizontal line test where um, when you draw horizontal lines through the graph of an inverse function um, you uh, should not intersect the graph more than once this is the again the flip of your vertical uh, line test so the vertical line test uh, told us if the graph was a function or not. The horizontal line test tells us if the function has an inverse. So to know if a function has an inverse, you perform the horizontal line test. And, uh, and you know that when you um, are trying to graph the grid, f and uh, f inverse are reflected. Across the y equals x line, so the, it's like the mirror was placed um, along y equals x. You know, y equals x would be the diagonal line. So if you had um, a graph like this, then you would have a graph like this. So that they are mirror images of each other. So you got your. Uh, inverse functions kind of uh, reviewed here now let's talk about inverse functions for uh, sine okay inverse sine function again recall the graph of a sine function this would be one period right now, uh, we just said the horizontal line test will tell us if this function has an inverse or not. When you do the horizontal line test, right, let's say you did it on, over here, it crosses in more than one spot. So the horizontal line test fails. However, if we were to restrict our domain, restrict our sine function, then we can see that we could perhaps um, find the inverse for just that restricted portion. So what we're doing is, we will think about this. This could be considered here, wherein, again, if you did the horizontal line test, it passes through this point as well. So we want to restrict the domain in such a way that your graph looks like that. So uh, in this case, what happens is your graph has been restricted so that now when you do the horizontal line test, the horizontal line test passes. So this is a portion of your sine function. Now if you uh, were to see their corresponding coordinates, okay, this would be a negative pi over 2, this would be 0, this would be that, pi over 2, and this would have been one and negative one right now remember that y x comma y uh, for this function would uh, be flipped or switched or interchanged if you want to generate the inverse function so then it's the um, your your grid here that has to flip so it's like your x and the y axis rotated and uh, when you begin to graph the the coordinates for this so let me mark the coordinates first so you can see the flip that will be pi over 2 comma 1 this will be 0 comma 0 
and this would be negative pi over 2. And as you can see here, your uh, this function is y equals sine x, but then your restriction for x was between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. In fact, we included negative pi over 2 as you see the dot there, solid dot. So any uh, all x values between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 would be the restricted sine function for which you can uh, find an inverse function. Okay? So if you were to find the inverse function, this has to be switched. This will now become 1 comma pi over 2. And so you'll have to find your 1 comma uh, pi over 2. So, uh, you know, this would be 0, 0. So that is still going to be this point. And this one will be switched to negative 1 comma negative pi over 2. So to, to help me graph this more, I want to stretch this a little bit. And uh, let's understand that you have uh, pi over 2 that's greater than 1. So I want to mark 1 here. Pi over 2 would be here. It's too uh, spaced out, but uh, manage with this. So 1, comma, pi over 2 would be this point here. Okay, and 0, 0 is here. And uh, negative 1, comma, negative pi over 2 would be here. So this graph looks like this. So if I were to draw this out a little better, this would be y equals sine x and the blue would be y equals sine inverse of x. Notice the notation. Okay. And uh, you notice that y equals x was the mirror image across which these two were reflected y equals x y. And so now you have uh, the restricted domain of sine x producing the inverse function for it, which is y equals sine inverse of x. Okay, And we can do likewise for cosine as well. So let's think about the restriction here. For this restriction, negative uh, pi over 2 to pi over 2, notice also that this restriction is nicer in the sense that it passes through the origin so that you could actually draw the y equals x line to get its uh, mirror image about y equals x. So uh, we really like these, uh, uh, th this particular restriction. You could have made this restriction in another period as well, but we just like it near the origin just for the convenience of it. Um, now we have for x and y equals sine x, negative pi over 2. I just uh, uh, look at you know, easy, easy mark, uh, easy points. Zero pi over four and pi over two. Right? For these ones, if you take the corresponding sine values, uh, negative sine of negative pi over two will be negative one, and uh, pi over four will be with for the negative will be negative root two over two. 0, positive root 2 over 2, and 1. Now, if you were to get the graph for the inverse, notice that my notation is x and y, but we will be switching the x and the y coordinates. So when x is negative 1, sine inverse of negative 1 is negative pi over 2. When x is negative root 2 over 2, sine inverse of negative root 2 over 2 is negative 1. And that's what we have graphed here. Now, um, if we were to write this in the notation, okay, so you know that y equals sine x. That x is, a, is an angle, right, that way. y equals sine x, means that this x give, gives us an angle 
And if you find sine of that angle, you get the y, which is a value, a number. Okay. Now, when you are writing it in the other notation, okay. <laughs> equals sine inverse of x it looks like your x and the y are in the same spot but they have been switched and they have been renamed as x and y in the way we see it now so the x here would actually be the value and the y here will give you the angle because they got switched right they got switched so uh, what we like to do is if you were to see it right from here okay it's as if the sign got switched over to the other side. So then we could write x as sine inverse of y. And here you can clearly see that the x gave us the angle. Because x is still the same x. So x is still the angle. And y is the value. So when you see it, see the x and the y switched. And x and the y positions are physically switched. Then you can you know understand that the angle and the value positions are preserved but when your x and y are switched and then switched back to the regular x and y format then it's a little challenging so the way for us to remember is this sign with an argument will always have the argument as the angle sign inverse will always have the argument as a value okay. please uh, do not forget this so that when, I, uh, when you are uh, computing these, evaluating these, you know what to expect. Okay. So if I give sine pi over 4, you know that sine pi over 4 is sine with an argument that's an angle. So sine of an angle gives you the value. So sine pi over 4 gives you root 2 over 2. On the other hand, if I gave you sine inverse of root 2 over 2, you know that sine inverse has the argument that's always a value. So sine inverse of a value that means I'm looking for the answer which is an angle. So we'll go back to the unit circle and look for the corresponding angle for which sine inverse of root 2 over 2 points to, what it points to, points to pi over 4. Okay. So that's the general idea here. So let's go ahead and um, do some problems. Find the exact value. sine inverse of now um, the word value here is in the problem where it doesn't matter what the answer is whether it's an angle or a numerical the, the coordinate value it doesn't matter because you are still um, asked to give the value the answer okay so when I say value here I actually mean the coordinate so it's a, it's a numerical value as a coordinate. Angle is also numerical. What I mean here is that it's the coordinate, right? So Come back here to our given problem. And it says sine inverse of root 2 over 2. Whenever you have sine inverse, you know this is actually pointing to the value or the coordinate. Because there is the word value in the problem, I'm going to stick to the word coordinate to indicate what that should be. So sine inverse of a coordinate. That means the answer that we are getting should be the angle. Right? So sine inverse of root 2 over 2. So come to your unit circle and look for the sine position which has a root 2 over 2. The y coordinate would be root 2 over 2. In fact, you have one here as well. The other places it is negative root 2 over 2. So these are the two places where you get positive root 2 over 2, here and here. So their corresponding angles are pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. Pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. But then we have a problem. You want to make sure that these are angles. The answer is an angle that is within the restricted domain. Okay? So what happens here? So I have to consider the domain. The restricted domain is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So you have to stay within these two quadrants. Okay? Any angle within these two quadrants. So that means I can only stick to pi over 4, which is coming from the lower so 
So uh, this is how we are going to reason this. Okay? You know, we just dis we just discussed that sine inverse of this coordinate should give us an angle, right? The general notation for angle is theta. So we know this unknown answer, um, theta, is your sine inverse of uh, root two over two. And uh, because of the inverse restriction, which implies that this theta must be between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, right? That was the restricted domain for sine, remember? That was the, re the restriction on the sine, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So we have to make sure that our theta sticks to that or falls within that restriction. Okay? So this implies this theta equals sine inverse of root 2 over 2. It's as if you took the sine inverse to the other side. Okay? So that means you are able to rewrite this as sine theta equals root 2 over 2, bearing in mind that theta will take a value only between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. We figured out the answer. I'm trying to teach you how to write it mathematically so that it's all robust. And um, here we have the only place where for this restriction, the only place is that theta is equal to pi over 4 quadrant 1. Okay. These uh, angles can only be from quadrant 4 and quadrant 1, but in quadrant 4, you can't use the quadrant 4 angles as it is, you have to use the negative angles. Remember? So in quadrant 4, this would be negative pi over, four, uh, pi over 2. Negative pi over 3. Cosine of 2 pi over 3 is negative half. Write a relation involving the inverse cosine. So we know this relation that. sine y equals x then it implies you can move the cosine to the other side and say y equals cosine inverse of x yeah we did that with theta so you could do that with theta okay. so if it's cosine theta equals x then implies theta it equals cosine inverse of x it just uh, you know we could use the theta or we could use x and y it just depends on um, what our convenience is, right? So feel free to be able to switch between the two forms. So this is the relationship that we have between the cosine and the cosine inverse. So now let's uh, take the problem that's given to us. Cosine 2 pi over 3 equals negative half. That means you keep the angle 2 pi over 3, move the cosine to the other side, so you get cosine inverse of negative half. Now come back and check. Yes, your cosine inverse will have the argument which is always a coordinate. Right? The coordinate you can locate in the unit circle. In this case, it will be the x coordinate because it's cosine. And the answer to cosine inverse of the coordinate will always be an angle. And so they all verify that. How about in the degree mode? Tan 35 degrees is approximately 0.47. Write a relationship. Involving the inverse tangent. 
call the relationship, you know. So we know that if tan y is x, it implies y equals tan inverse of x. Well, it is true for sine, it's true for cosine again. Everywhere, if we can have specific restrictions, then we can find their corresponding inverses. We'll talk about the restrictions, but uh, we're just trying to learn how to write. So tan 35 degrees is 0.47. That means 35 degrees is approximately. Move the tan to the other side. When you move it, it takes tan inverse. problem given the other way around you can still move it back to tan right so for instance if they gave us as tan inverse of 0.4738 equals 35 degrees then you can move the tan to the other side so when the tan is in the inverse format and you move it to the other side it will have to undo the inverse so it will just become a regular tan okay just remember that okay so those were just exercises for us to move them here and there now let's talk about inverse cosine function. If you recall, the cosine function would be like a V. And if you perform the horizontal line test, you realize it's not a one-to-one -one function. In other words, this is not, uh, this function does not have an inverse. So you have to restrict this, um, the domain here too. And if you wanted to restrict the domain, you want to make sure that the horizontal line test still passes. So the restriction of the domain would be to get rid of maybe here. And then you can have the uh, function working fine. So then it's here and here. And so this will be your 0. This is, this is zero. This position is 1. And uh, this this midpoint here would be pi over 2, and this would be a pi. So if you were to write the coordinates here, it's going to be 0, 1, and for this point, it will be pi over 2, 0, and for this point, that makes it pi, negative 1. And if you were to find its inverse, function then you have to switch the coordinates right so if you switch the coordinates this would become 1 comma 0 this would get a 0 comma pi over 2 this would be negative 1 comma pi notice that for cosine function the restricted the restricted domain took uh, angles between 0 and pi so let's write that somewhere here y equals cosine x has restriction on x x takes only values between 0 and pi for it to have an inverse. I'm going to draw uh, the graph that has both the cosine and its inverse with these new, new coordinates. So what we have here is, um, because I'm, I'm trying to graph both cosine and cosine inverse on the same grid, I have to mark the, the 1 and the pi positions in, in the, both the x and the y axes. So um, I've marked 1 and pi over 2 and then pi over pi is spaced a little away because pi over 2 is 1.5 something, right? Three, and pi is 3.14. So uh, anyway, uh, that's how you bring both the, um, the markings together. And what we notice is, uh, come back here, 0 comma 1, pi over 2 comma 0 and pi negative 1, that's this one. This is your y equals cosine x. And the switch of all those coordinates would be this, which is y equals cosine inverse x. I say y equals and y equals for both of them, uh, just to indicate that I'm using the same x, y axes, right, to, to graph them. So if I were to write an equivalent for this, right, an equivalent for this, that would be x equals cosine inverse of y. Yeah? 
so that would mean the orange itself and if I were to write the equivalent for this one that would be x equals cosine y yeah so uh, because the cosine inverse is switched to the other side so it becomes cosine y equals x and uh, here cosine is moved to the other side so it takes up cosine inverse so you'll have to undo the sign if it's inverse it, 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 you'll have to undo the inverse if it is um, not uh, with inverse then you have to apply the inverse and uh, as you can see, y equals x line is passing through it, and the purple and the orange uh, graphs are symmetric to each other. And uh, in all of these, the restriction was between 0 and pi for the angle. Now, the other important thing I want to draw to your attention is, because your x and the y axes got switched when you took the inverse, the values that were domain for um, the original function will now become the range for the inverse function. Likewise, the domain of the inverse function will become the range of the original function. So you, can, you begin to see that, that uh, connection. In fact, if you come, come up here, and we did this uh, table here, you know that this is the domain. And this is the range. Okay? All x values are the domain, all um, y values are your range. But notice how the range came over here. All the range values came here. And all the domain values came here when you took its inverse. So that is how they are connected, just by virtue of the fact that their axes are interchanged. Right? So then um, let's uh, remember that as well. And we we will discuss about uh, tangent inverse tangent function, and then um, we'll bring all their properties together. So we'll have one place where. Uh, we'll have the so we have inverse tangent function. Now uh, we recall that tangent function actually comes with its own uh, uh, restrictions because of the asymptote. Right? And uh, their asymptotes were at negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 and this was 0, 0 and this value was pi over 4. And here it was negative pi over 4. And so we had these five points, right? Negative pi over 2, pi over 4, 0, pi over 4, pi over 2. But uh, technically, you had the asymptotes at those endpoints and only three dots, three points in between. Now, if you were to switch them, right? Let's uh, write their coordinates. Uh, now we're going to switch them. It's going to be this is um, let's first write the way it is. This would this is pi over four comma one zero zero and this will be negative pi over four comma negative one. And when it gets switched, this becomes one comma zero zero. Nothing happens here because it's still zero zero. And this becomes Let's uh, bring both of these in the same grid. In fact, you can see this actually turned around because that's how your x and y axis will get interchanged. So if you put them both on the same grid, it's going to get busy, but you will see how one is switched to the other. So when you graph them on the same grid, this would be your y equals tan x, and this is your y equals tan inverse of x. And you can see that the restrictions are negative pi over 2, pi over 2, because of the asymptotes here. Alright, now we'll compile them all together. So let's start with um, y equals sine x. The restricted domain for this would be negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, and it's included because we use the endpoints and its uh, corresponding domain uh, I mean the range was negative 1 to 1. I'll make a quick comparison with the inverse. If you had y equals sine inverse of x the domain was negative 1 to 1 remember they get switched and the range was negative pi over 2. Then, 
y equals cosine x. We'll have the domain that's restricted to go from 0 to pi and its range was also negative for the inverse remember to switch them and for tan the domain was negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 remember we cannot include the end points because of the asymptotes but we didn't have any restriction on the range, so the range went from negative infinity to positive infinity. Y equals tan inverse. Okay, when we use the calculator, you could use a, um, uh, you, you have to set it to the radian mode or the degree mode as a, uh, as required to get your output in the correct uh, for the angle in the correct mode. Now, um, another name for sine inverse is arc sine. Okay, this is uh, another name given so that we don't have the superscript to, to to write, especially when you have to type these things. So uh, they came up with another name so that it's all uh, uh, written in one level instead of having a superscript. Right? So likewise, you have cosine inverse, which can be arc cos, and tan inverse is arc tangent. Um, coming to the calculator problems, if I had to find sine inverse of one fourth using the calculator, then uh, you can set the calculator to the radian mode because you know that sine inverse of the argument here would be sine inverse of a coordinate, so the result, the answer for this sine inverse should be an angle. So if you were to use the radian mode, the angle comes out to be 0.25. In the degree mode, the angle comes out to be 14.48. Remember, you have to put the degree symbol because you use it. I try this as well. Tan inverse of negative 9.65. Here again, if you were using the radian mode, the angle will be approximately negative 1.4675. Remember, it's giving us in the decimal form, but if you were to see it in terms of um, the pi notation, then this is like pi is 1.5 something, so this is very close to negative pi over 2, right? You can kind of sense it, its position. Then you have the degree mode, which is negative 84.08 degrees. Again, we expected it to be close to negative uh, pi over 2, which is negative 90 degrees. And so the degree mode answer gives us negative 84 degrees. So we were in the neighborhood. Uh, that's how you kind of eyeball your answers. All right, um, now, now we go to a composition of Review of composition of functions tells us that if you have two compo two functions um, you know, composed one inside the other, then uh, we have uh, we, we have seen that if remember composition was this f circle g f circle notation, which was the same as saying f of g of x, uh, and uh, you could also do it the other way around where g circle f means f goes inside g. seen from experience in algebra that f circle g the answer to that need not be the same as g circle f in most cases they won't be the same however they will be the same in one particular case 
that is when F and G are inverses of each other. If F and G are inverses of each other, that's the only time when F circle G is the same as G circle F. Okay. I want to use this in our um, inverse notation. So if F and F inverse are inverses of each other, then F of F inverse of X will be the same as F inverse of F of X. Right? Instead of G, I now have the F inverse notation. And in particular, they will always be equal to X. Each must be equal to X. Okay? So this is equal to X. And this must be equal to X. No other number. Right? Can't be X over 2. Can't be 2X. Can't be X squared. It has to be exactly X. If X was the variable. If, say, T was the variable, it has to come out as T. So that is really, really robust because it's telling us what must happen. Okay. And uh, all this was true provided x is in the domain. Must be. For uh, here, it must be in the domain of f inverse because here it's uh, with the f must be the domain of f so that is how we know that this will be true if this is outside the domain this rule doesn't hold true okay so now let's uh, look at a combination of uh, uh, the, the inverse properties involving the, inverse, uh, the function and the inverse okay now sine of sine inverse of x when you compose these two you should get back x and this is true only if your x was in the um, in the interval negative 1 to 1. Remember, this symbol means for all. X and this symbol means belongs. For all X that belongs to this interval negative 1 to 1. If your um, X, say, was 2, sine of sine inverse of 2, you won't get back a 2 because 2 is outside this interval. Right? And then we have the other way around. Sine inverse of sine X will be x for all x that belongs to this interval negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 notice how because now we have sine and the x here is the angle your x uh, interval also appears as an angle okay. and then you have cosine of cosine inverse of x will be x for all x in the interval Cosine inverse of cosine x will be x for all x that belongs to the interval 0 to 5. Tan of tan inverse of x will be x for all x. There was no restriction on the x, so it's actually all. inverse of tan x will be x for all x that falls in the interval. This is going to be x. Remember, you can't include the endpoints because of the asymptotes. So we'll do some problems based on this relationship. Let's start with the first example. Um, sine inverse of sine pi over 4. Don't automatically say, okay, the sine inverse and the sine will cancel each other and I'll get a pi over 4. What should we do? We should make sure that this pi over 4 is in the interval. So you're using the second uh, condition for the sine, where you want to make sure that x lies in this interval of angles, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. x equals pi over 4 belongs to this interval negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Isn't it? Pi over 4 is in the four, first quadrant. Pi over, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 is from the fourth quadrant to the first quadrant. So 
this is good. Therefore, we know that the answer to this would be simply pi over 4. Let's box it. What about sine inverse of... sine 5 pi over 4. Notice how 5 pi over 4, I can take you here quickly, 5 pi over 4 is in the third quadrant. But you can only choose angles from the negative angles from the fourth quadrant and positive angles from the first quadrant. 5 pi over 4 is in the third quadrant which is outside the domain. So you know that this one x equals 5 pi over 4 is not the interval negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So our job is to see if we can find an equivalent angle for this 5 pi over 4. Okay. So uh, 5 pi over 4, we can use the reference angle. Right? The reference angle for 5 pi over 4 would be this is 5 pi over 4, right? So the reference angle would be from the x-axis. So 5 pi over 4 would be the same as pi over 4 because you'll do uh, pi, 5 pi over 4 minus pi, right? Minus pi, which gives you pi over 4. So we got the reference angle as pi over 4. And we know pi over 4 must be uh, good for um, to stay within the uh, interval. However, in the, fourth in the third quadrant, your sign was negative, right? So you want to make sure that your pi over 4, because if you just use pi over 4, it's going to give us uh, a positive angle in the first quadrant. So make sure that you adjust it for um, when sign is negative. So we'll come over here. Rewrite 5 pi over 4. pi over 4 when you use a reference angle it gives you 5 pi over 4 minus pi which is and then we also remember that this is in quadrant 3 where sine is negative so you want to convert this to a negative pi over 4 so that that's when the sign will be. After you have made your conversion, then we can evaluate. of sine 5 pi over 4. It's now rewritten as sine inverse of sine negative pi over 4. And now we can see that this negative pi over 4, x equals negative pi over 4, is a negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 in this interval. And uh, that means your answer comes out. more work when you have an angle that is not in the domain you just don't discard it you'll have to go back and say okay this is not in the domain let me find an equivalent angle to what about cosine of cosine inverse of 0.6 for this we want to again go back to the cosine properties so it was cosine of cosine inverse so that's the first of the cosine properties the first green one we want that x to lie between negative 1 and 1 so in our case our x is 
and uh, this 0 0.6 lies in this interval negative 1 to 1. Therefore, the answer to this would be directly 0 0.6 because you can actually undo the cosine and the cosine inverse uh, to get the point six. Now, if you had, let's say, let's take another one for, for tan. say tan of tan inverse of 77 okay. now go to tan of tan inverse property tan of tan inverse is the first orange property and it says x can be any real number uh, that's kind of easy because it's any real number no, no restriction literally so we come back and say this one x equals 77 lies in Now uh, we can have problems that could ask us to um, to find the exact value of two different, not the sine and the sine inverse, but uh, sine and cosine inverse or cosine and tan inverse. How do we answer those questions? So let's take a look at this one. Find the exact value of cosine of tan inverse of 5 over 12. So you can't use the, the properties to undo because they are not matching. It's cosine and tan inverse. But we have to now evaluate this, right? Okay, our approach is to first understand what is happening inside and what's happening outside. So cosine of something, right? That's what this is. That means this whole thing must be an angle because it's cosine. It's not cosine inverse. And if you look at tan inverse of 5 pi over 2, you know that has to be an angle, right? Because tan inverse of, uh, of a coordinate should give us an angle. So it's all lining up. And let's call this angle theta because it's unknown at this point. So let's call this theta. So in other words, this theta is your tan inverse of 5 over 12. And we know because of the inverse function, this theta has a restriction. This theta must be between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So now we can move the tan inverse to the other side. And that gives us tan theta equals 5 over 12. So we know that if we had this kind of setup, we can always draw the right triangle theta. So this will be opposite adjacent. Use Soka Towa. Towa is tangent, adjacent, uh, I mean opposite over adjacent. So the 5 and the 12, position them. So opposite will take the 5, adjacent will take the 12. Okay? Because tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now we need to find the hypotenuse. So we know that hypotenuse is square root of the sum of the other two squares, right? So 5 squared plus 12 squared. Go ahead and compute this. So we got the hypotenuse to be 13 from this. Now we come back to the original problem. Okay. So cosine of tan inverse of 5 over 12 is this is the angle theta that is the angle here in your triangle so cosine theta in this triangle with uh, hypotenuse now found would be uh, the formula for cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse actually got to evaluate of the Gordian triangle. So cosine of tan inverse of 5 over 12 is 
these ones you will not use the properties but you will use the properties indirectly to get your money. How about uh, evaluate? sine inverse of root 3 over 2 and uh, sine inverse has the restriction that root 3 over 2 that uh, uh, I mean this answer for sine inverse of root 3 over 2 this angle must be between so again let's call this angle say alpha okay. this angle must lie between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 and here this one is also going to be an angle because it's cosine inverse of a coordinate and uh, this angle has restriction and let's call this angle beta this has to be between 0 and so go to your unit circle and see where root 3 over 2 can occur between for these angles so root 3 over 2 3 over 2, positive root 3 over 2, for, come again, for sine, right? So then, um, I want to just expand this a little bit. So I'm saying alpha is sine inverse of root 3 over 2. Move the sine inverse to the other side, so you get sine alpha root 3 over 2. So you're asking yourself, sine of what angle gives me a root 3 over 2, provided that angle lies between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And the answer for that is... Root 3 over 2 is the, is the y coordinate, and so for that, the corresponding angle is pi over 3. You also have root 3 over 2, which is positive in the second quadrant, but second quadrant is not part of your domain, only the fourth and the first. So you choose only pi over 3. So well, that must be pi over 3. Now let's focus on the other one. This means that angle beta is cosine inverse of half. So cosine inverse, move it to the other side. So cosine beta is half. So again, what angle? Cosine of what angle gives me a half, provided that angle is between 0 and pi, from 0 to pi. So you want cosine to be half. The x coordinate should be positive half. Now x coordinate is uh, uh, should be positive half. In the first and the third quadrant, uh, sorry, first and the second quadrant because it's zero to pi. Okay, and uh, for that you are looking at this one. It's a positive half. Here um, the x coordinates are all negative, so once again it's pointing to pi over three. So that's another pi over three. So if I collect all these answers together, we have tan of pi over 3 plus pi over 3. That is tan to pi over 3. That's easy because now you can go to the unit circle and look at tan 2 pi over 3. Uh, first locate 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3 is right here. Tan is sine over cosine. So that is y over x, y coordinate over x. Root 3 over 2 over negative 5. answer to this problem would be negative root 3. The next lesson here is for us to be able to solve triangles. Using inverse trig, inverse trig functions. For that, I want to first define what solving triangles means. So to solve triangle means find 
say solve the triangle, then that means it. So let's uh, warm up by starting with this uh, first question here. Now, if they gave us this triangle, so right now, angle is to be theta. If they ask us to say, uh, if they ask us to find theta, then you go ahead and figure out how these uh, sides are related. Because this is theta, you know that this is adjacent and this is hypotenuse. Look for the trig function that connects the adjacent and the hypotenuse. You soak it over, and that tells us that cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. And uh, cosine theta actually is so uh, theta can then be figured out. You can find the angle. You can single out the angle by moving the cosine to the other side, which makes it cosine inverse. So cosine inverse of nine over twelve. At this point, you will use the calculator, and uh, we usually like your answer to be given in radians. So go ahead and uh, maybe round it to four decimal places. had a problem that was descriptive like this. A right triangle has a vertical leg of length 8 meters and a hypotenuse of length 13 meters. The angle opposite the vertical leg is labeled theta. Find theta and radians and round to four decimal places. When you see a problem like this, we want you to construct the right triangle immediately and see uh, if you can find all the positions for the description. You know there are two legs in a triangle, so the vertical leg is obviously the one that's upright, and that's given to be 8 meters. And the hypotenuse, you definitely know that's the longest side, and it's always opposite the 90 degree angle, so that's going to be 30 meters. And the angle opposite the vertical leg, so this is the angle that's opposite the vertical leg, and that is labeled theta, 5 meter. Once you get your positions, your, your work is pretty much set out for you. look for the trig function that it has these two connected. So Katova tells us that sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. In our case it is 8 over 13. Sine theta is 8 over 13. That means theta is sine inverse of 8 over 13. Set it to the radian mode and find your theta and round it to four decimal places. Again, if you don't write the word radians, it's understood to be radians. For clarity's sake, I write it. Uh, but if it's degrees, of course, remember to put them. In this problem, they gave us the diagram and have given us uh, some details. So we have uh, an angle given to us and a side given to us. In particular, we're given the hypotenuse. And, uh, so we need to find the all the unknown angles and all the unknown sides. To, uh, to help us get started, first let's understand that we have, out of the three angles, we have two angles that are known, right? So uh, we know that in a triangle, the three angles add up to 180 degrees. So angle A plus angle B plus angle C will be 180 degrees. And uh, angle A is given to be 32 degrees. B is the one that we need to find out. B is unknown. And C is a 90 degree angle. Solve for B. That will be 180 degrees. Minus and that comes out to be 58. You can add on the left side and then subtract it too. Okay, so we got B. Now uh, we can find uh, one of the sides first because you could use uh, the hypotenuse. So now I have sine, if I used sine B, okay, if my angle of interest is, uh, I guess it is, okay, so we got this to be 58 degrees. So for the purple setup, if that is my angle, A becomes the opposite side, isn't it? This will still be the hypotenuse, the 14, because it's opposite the 90 degree line. 
So then sine of angle B will be opposite over hypotenuse. And in our case, opposite will be the side A, the missing side A over 14. But we just found angle B to be 58 degrees. 58 degrees equals A, sine 58 degrees equals A over 14. Now we can solve for A by multiplying both sides by 14, which implies that A is 14 times sine 58 degrees. Uh, go ahead and compute this. Do you get A? comes out to be uh, 11.877 so approximately They didn't give us anything so I'm just rounding it. Usually the instruction is given in the problem. And now we have um, A to be 32 degrees. So for A, for A, this side B would be the opposite, right? So you could do that. And uh, again, use sine 32 degrees in this sense. So I'll just uh, use sine A, sine of angle A. The sine formula is still the same, but the players have changed. Now the opposite side is actually the side B over 14. And A was given to be 32 degrees. you could have instead of using sine B to find A we could have used cosine A to find that same A so I'll show that to you here. you could have had cosine A which is adjacent over hypotenuse and adjacent is the A in this case, this would have been adjacent for angle A, this would be adjacent. So A over 14, and so uh, cosine A, which is 32 degrees, is small a over 14, which implies A is 14 times cosine 32 degrees. And if you calculated that, that works out. Because they're equivalent, it just depends on which one you want to use. Similarly, you could have done um, you know, used uh, angle B to find side B as well. Okay. So this is a question of um, whichever one you find. Okay, so here's our next question. In this case, we are given, um, it says solve the triangle. And we are given this right triangle. sides it's a right triangle so you know that uh, your uh, one of the angles is 90 degrees but uh, that's all we have so uh, can we find uh, at least the missing side of course this is a right triangle so we could use Pythagorean theorem so we have a is square root of 11 squared minus 8 squared please remember again 11 is the hypotenuse so that's a uh, so hypotenuse is given to us, that means you have to do hypotenuse squared minus the side squared. If hypotenuse is what you're trying to find, then you will add the legs. But here you'll have to, if you have hypotenuse, you have to subtract one of the legs from the sides now it's time to find our um, angles so now I have 8 and 11 these were given in the problem I usually like to use what is given in the problem just because you know um, it's just less room for error if we computed and made a mistake then whatever we use from that could also result in uh, wrong answer so I always 
try to use that kind of torsion, but we have to be confident about our answers as well, right? Okay, so now if I wanted to find angle B, right, if I wanted to find angle B, angle B would give me, this is the angle I want to find, then this 8 would be my adjacent. And that's still the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse never changes no matter where your angle is. So um, I'm going to use cosine B to be adjacent over hypotenuse. And B is unknown. So cosine B will be 8 over 11. If I want to find B, I have to move the cosine to the other side. So I get cosine inverse of 8 over 11. And, um, for these problems, we like to keep them in uh, degrees because you know that uh, the three uh, angles add up to 180 degrees. So in triangle problems, we like to present the angle as degrees, not radians, unless it's specifically indicated. So uh, here too, I B will be an approximate angle. Set it to the degree mode and uh, find cosine inverse of the And I hope you figured out where the button is. It's usually behind your sine and the cosine button. So cosine inverse is behind the cosine button. So you'll have to use the second uh, function. Well, that comes out to be 43.3 degrees. And then let's find the uh, angle. Let's find angle A. Angle A can also be uh, found by uh, using 8 over 11, in which case angle A will have 8 as the opposite side. I'm using angle A. I'm using orange to, to differentiate this. So uh, angle A will be opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse is the sine. So sine A will be opposite over hypotenuse, which is 8 over 11. And then you can find A and sine. You could have done this first too. However, if you've already found B, you know that this is already 90 degrees, so you don't have to do another trick function to All you have to do is remember that A plus B plus C, the angles A plus B. And uh, A is unknown. We just found B. And C is 90 degrees. From that, you can find A to be equal to. So you will uh, use uh, as much um, al algebra as possible and you will uh, lean on trig uh, functions only when you need them. But feel free to use them as you see, um, as you're inspired. If you're inspired to see it as a sine function, go for it. Inspired it, uh, to see it as a cosine, then And for these problems, usually we like to put, the, put all the details at the end, so as the solution. And small a is 7.55. If they give you units, then you have to say like 7.55 meters and things like that. B was, um, because that was called A, this should be your B, right? The 8. concludes our session here and uh, thank you again for watching and I will see you in the next video